Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for our midweek service where we are studying the Red, Fetter, Red Letter Prayer Life. Um, we're glad that our consistent few are with us on Facebook and we hope that more will join us as we continue with this study. Um, just one announcement before we begin, before we get into it. Um, the prayer study will not be held next week, the 19th, as our new majors, uh, Dan and Karen Brunel, will be at DHQ for their welcome there. And then we will resume on August 26th, right here at 2 p.m. on our live stream, where we will study Chapter 11, Pray Graciously, and Major Karen will lead us. In that. So again, thank you for joining us today. Um, we look forward to getting into chapter 10 here, and Major Karen is going to lead us in that. I'm sorry, I forgot I was going to pray as well, so let's pray together. God, you are so good, and we thank you that you're a God who hears our prayers and knows our hearts. So right now we pray that as we focus on how to speak to you better and um, through this, this next chapter, that you would bless us as we study that. You would bless Major Karen as she leads us and just be with us now, Lord. Thank you for meeting our needs and being near to us and hearing our prayers. We love you, and we pray your blessing on this time together. Amen. Well, hello, friends. Uh, thank you for your warm welcome to Old Orchard Beach. Uh, it's great to be here with you. Uh, and to uh, enjoy this Bible study. And I've been hearing that uh, this is a fantastic Bible study, and as I have um, read a few chapters, I'll be honest with you, I haven't read the whole book, but I've read a few chapters and, of the Red Letter Prayer Life, and it is a wonderful book. Um, and I can't wait to read the rest of the book. Uh, I want to... Um, just review a little bit about uh, some of the reading. Um, and last week, I believe it was pray specifically. And I hope that uh, you were able to um, glean some lessons out of that. Um, and we were reminded um, that, um, that we need to do that on a regular basis. Um, but be prior to that, um, I understand that the first week uh, it was shared that Jesus' first followers saw the fruits of his prayer life and asked him, teach us to pray. And this is what has led to these other topics throughout the book. And Tony Evans in his book, Kingdom of Prayer, shares an interesting point. The disciples did not ask to learn how to heal people or raise one from the dead, or feed huge groups, they asked how to pray. And uh, that is significant to note. The disciples had seen Jesus set aside time for prayer, and uh, that that time seemed to give him uh, power for other things. And we too uh, can learn from that as well. Um, we've also... Um, have learned uh, from chapters two and three uh, to pray privately. What you are in private is what you really are, from page 30. Uh, and to pray simply, because my Father already knows what I need. The four words that start what we call the Lord's Prayer, our Father in heaven, teach us the importance of praying communally. The word our reminds us that we never pray alone. Sometimes we may feel that we're alone, but we really aren't. Um, people are praying for us. They are lifting us up in prayer. And I know personally I have felt the prayers of God's people. And so we are never alone. And that is a wonderful um, um, reminder today that uh, he is always with us and that other people are with us as well. Uh, 
Also, the word Father reminds us that we are related to God Almighty. This was in praying relationally. And we are to apprentice with him, as all good children do. Praying confidently. Praying confidently, because this Almighty uh, God, relative of ours in heaven, is utterly willing and able to answer. And next in the model prayer are three requests, which draw us into the mission and priorities of Jesus himself. This is uh, page 100, to teach us about praying cooperatively. May your name be kept holy, may your kingdom spread, may your will be done. And the fourth request, written in Matthew 6.11, teaches us to pray practically about every need every day. And for everyone, give us today our daily bread. And that may come in many different ways, not just praying for physical food, but the bread certain breads in our life that we might need, whether it be um, for health issues, whether it be for um, concerns about loved ones, um, we need to pray. And I mentioned last week was praying specifically, presenting our specific needs to God. And today is all about praying contritely. And so, um, we're going to talk a little bit about that today, and if you have any comments or anything that you would like to uh, mention about this, um, please um, let us know. Um, you'll see on your screen uh, a picture. Um, this is not my house. I just want you to know that. This is a picture that um, Laura found for me because in the very beginning of chapter 10, it talks about this TV show called Hoarders. And I don't know if you've ever watched it. Um, I think I remember seeing part of it one time, and I, I actually had to change the channel because it, it got uh, kind of scary um, <clears throat> what I was watching. And I didn't, I just didn't, couldn't actually watch it. You know, it was difficult to watch. Um, but this was actually someone's home. This is this was not a set. Um, this is somebody's home. Um, and this showed um, that there are people who live like this. They have stacks of newspapers and magazines and different things in their home, and for whatever reason, they can't throw it away. And so their house just gets filled with all of these things. Some of it is trash. Um, and. Um, so I can't even imagine what it would be like to live in something like that. Um, but the author uh, compares this TV show uh, to that of an overburdened heart and soul of a person, um, a, a person's life that becomes unmanageable. And so a room in a house that was once empty and clean becomes a mountain of junk and trash. And we read that um, on page 123 of chapter 10. If you're following along at home, I, I would um, advise you to do that if you, if, you, if you have your book so that you can do that. So today I'm going to talk about contrite. What, is, what, is, what does the word contrite mean? Uh, when I hear the word contrite, I think of a kind of an old-fashioned word. Um, archaic in many respects, not, not something that we hear often. Uh, by definition, it is a person who is feeling remorseful uh, or guilty, expressing remorse or penitence. In the Bible, we read uh, of a verse that speaks of the contrite in Psalm 51:17. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O oh God. Um, there's an example in the Bible of contriteness, and that's found in Luke 18, uh, verses 9 to 14. And it talks about the, the um, Pharisee, uh, and the tax collector. And the 
Bible paints a picture of the Pharisee as someone who's uh, this individual who's up, an upstanding citizen and a religious leader. And in his prayer, he, he preened and he pontificated. And, um, and so there's an image of that, I believe you can see that. There's this man and he's, he's praying, but his words are, um, I would say, kind of like for show, you know? I, you know and, and maybe even saying, I'm, I'm so glad that I'm not like other people. Um, that's the kind of prayer that he's offering. But in the same frame is a man who is a tax collector. Um, and tax collectors um, in those days were despised, but probably still some of that carries on today. <laughs> People who collect taxes are not well thought of. Um, but this man realized his own sinfulness. And uh, he asked for forgiveness and saying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner and then went home justified, meaning he was made right with, with God. And so the Bible uh, shows that. And this is a story that Jesus told. Um, and so we have this story uh, of what, what it means to be contrite. So we go further in our book, on page 124, where it says, um, a daily soul sweep. I, you're probably asking, what does that mean? Well, I know about sweeping, and it's something that we do in our home, isn't it? We sweep a lot. We pick up things and we put things away. Uh, but this is more of a spiritual uh, sweeping that we need to do. The author is suggesting that we should, we should at the end of the day, sweep, sweep things out, um, confess our sin, ask for forgiveness. And we also read that praying contritely means both being humble and repentant. And that it's an attitude and a posture that God finds attractive. So we need to be more like the tax collector. And we need to be more uh, humble and uh, recognizing our need of, of God. And uh, for those times when perhaps we said the wrong word or we took the wrong course of action and we need to humbly come before the Lord. So we need to take some steps uh, so that we can have that forgiveness and basically that's admitting your helplessness and confessing your sin. And we know that Jesus can provide us that full cleansing, not a, not a partial cleansing, not, not half done, but full, a full cleansing. And so we read that praying forgive me, as we do in the, in the Lord's Prayer, right? Forgive us, our, forgive us this day, our, uh, forgive us uh, our daily debts, we say in the prayer. Forgive me every day, we'll keep the soul swept and the heart uncluttered. Bill Hybels calls confession probably the most neglected area in personal prayer today. It's probably quite true. So we need to take some time to be introspective. Um, we need to look inward. Sometimes we have to go a little deeper. And we have to recognize our own hostility. Perhaps our resentment there are things perhaps we, we get upset about, our anger, uh, our lust, our greed, our self-centeredness at times. And so we're asking God to forgive our daily offenses. And that's what the daily soul sweeps about, sweeping out those uh, areas of our lives that are unpleasing to the Lord. Uh, the author also mentions the Book of Common Prayer as something that he uses, which I found interesting. And it's in his evening prayers, and it's on page 127 where he says, I will often pray a confession based on the words of the Book of Common Prayer. And this is the prayer. Almighty God, 
My father, I confess that I have sinned against you for my own fault in thought, word, and deed, in what I have done and in what I have left undone. And God knows we have left a lot undone at times, but we press onward, don't we? We press onward and we hope to do better the next day. And so this is what the, um, what the author Bob has, has done. Um, and also, um, we, read, we hear the old adage, confession is good for the soul. So pray contritely. A verse of scripture that also reminds us um, of our need to go to God. Found in 1 John 1 9, if we confess our sins to Him, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. And then we also have um, reminders. Reminders to pray. And those reminders are found in page 132, where it says, Grant me the grace of daily confession, forgiveness and cleansing. Wash from my hands the dust of earthly strivings. Make me sensitive to sin's approach. And make me quick to confess my sin's to you. Perhaps some of you have comments or questions about this chapter. Perhaps there's something that perhaps you're not understanding. I'd be happy to um, answer those questions and perhaps we can learn together. Let's take a few moments to um, reflect on the words of this song, All That I Am. And perhaps now it will be a time, a good time to, to look inward, to, to consider um, the Lord in your life and what he's saying to you just now. Uh, let's let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer.